If you've ran across any of my electrical videos in the past, you probably know I'm a pretty big fan of these Wago 221 lever nuts. There seems to be a bit of a confusion between the lever nut made by Wago and really any other push-in connector. I understand they both have clear housings, they look fairly similar, and look quite a bit different than the more common wire nuts. There are actually three reasons that I prefer that lever nut really to any push-in connectors, whether it's this ideal connector, which is what you're going to find down at Home Depot or at Lowe's, or even the Wago push-in connectors. They have a few different varieties as well. Let's take a closer look. We'll open these guys up, look at the internals, and talk about those three reasons that make the lever nut superior and a much better product for DIYers. So the first of the three reasons really is a key feature to the 221. So if I want to install my first wire, I would strip that to length on the side, insert, close the lever, and it's securely held within the lever nut. Now, if something changed, we want to remove the light fixture, we did something wrong, all we have to do is lift up on the lever and the wire comes right out and it is not damaged. So the lever nut can be reused. Then with the push-in connector, we have our wire strip. We're going to push that wire through into the housing and now it is securely held within that push-in connector. And with the clear housing, we can see the wire is fully in place. So if anything changed and now we need to remove the wire, the problem is we're going to have to at least remove some of the wire because these are one and done. Now, if you have short wires, that could be a bit of an issue and you're gonna to have to remove some of the already short wires. So first reason is simply the reusability on these 221 lever nuts are extremely handy, especially for us DIYers that might only be doing a few electrical projects a year and need a little bit more flexibility to do and undo our work to make sure everything is right. So the second reason is associated how wires are actually held in place. So with the ideal connector, if I kind of break off these two tabs, pull out that insert, what this is is two different things. It is your bus bar. So this portion here is called a bus bar. That is what's connecting your wires together and making sure there's continuity between the wires that are held within the push-in. And then these little lever arms here are actually what hold the wire in place. So if we try to push the wire in, Okay, so we got it past that lever arm. It's really just a, a bent piece of metal. So we would securely hold that. That's what that metal is pressing the wire down on the bus bar. People call out the surface area, but that surface area is more than enough to carry a load. I just don't prefer this retention mechanism compared to the Wago. So I popped off the end of this 221 Wago and I'm gonna lift this lever and show you what's going on. So the levers have a little cam inside of them and that cam will push up on a spring and then that fully compresses the spring such that your wire can easily fit into place. And then when we let down that spring, you'll see it rests against the wire and then presses it again against a very similar bus bar. That's also why once the wire goes, especially with 12 gauge, you're gonna have a little play in this lever. That's okay, it makes you think that maybe the wire's gonna pull out, but that's just because the cam doesn't need to compress the spring because the 12 gauge wire has pushed that spring up such that you have a little play now. Now, if we actually look at the internals, here's what we are looking at. So we are looking down into the connector and the bottom part is that bus bar. And you can also see the materials. There's some kind of chrome plating on this. This is similar to what I see in the plating that you'll see on a weather resistant outlet. So that is an additional benefit compared to the ideal, which did not have that plating on the bottom bus bar. But you can see the spring mechanisms are quite a bit different. And then the cam actually pushes up right here on that spring. And that's what allows you to insert the wire. You release it and then that presses down on the wire. 
So overall, the bus bar and retention springs of the Wago 221, I think are superior than the push-in, especially from Ideal. And then the final reason is overall just to the build quality. If you look at the push-in, it's really just three pieces. It's the clear housing, the colored insert, and then that bus bar and retention mechanism we talked about. So if we have a failure on this little piece of clear plastic here, that insert can start to pop out and then your bus bar and retention mechanism could pop right out as well. If you actually had a wire in, it'd look more like this where it'd pop out and then we'd have an exposed conductor which could obviously cause us an issue. And then the Wago does have an end cap that you can pop off and then that would expose the end but it's not gonna fall through quite as easily. So you would have still a fairly complete housing protecting your conductors. Again, opening the end, but protecting your conductors, and it's not gonna fall out of place. So it's kind of a redundant protection, even if you had an end cap fall off of your Wagos. So that's just to say the Wago should be a little bit more resilient and robust to even a failure that wouldn't cause a larger problem down the road. So those are the reasons why I lean towards the Wago 221. I really do not think there's a better connector on the market for DIYers, people doing their own work safely around the house. I just think it's a great connector and it's gonna save you time and hassle. One of the best ways to get started is to just grab a kit, a kit of two wire, three wire, and five wire Wagos. Those are gonna fit 95% of all your applications around the house. It goes up to 12 gauge, which is gonna meet your 20 amp circuits. And in the description, if you wanna help out the channel, you can go over to our Amazon store and you'll see a few of the different kits, the most common kits that we see people purchasing to get started with the Wago 221. Now, if you've ever went to swap out an outlet and you had short wires, you know it can be a huge pain in the butt. Well, in this video, I'll show you how to also use Wago 221s to extend out those wires so it's not such a heavy lift to simply swap out an outlet and do that safely. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.